try that again. You wish you were Veronica Mars. You are observant, logical, and downright brilliant. Like, stop. Number nine, you have a no, let's try that again. Like a mega multi-trip, trip, multi-trip. Multi Oof, this is a doozy. Question number five, no, yes. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to getting to know me in 25 questions. So Christopher from Books and Jams tagged me in this video a while ago and because I am repeatedly late at life and everything else, I am just getting to it now. So I will link Chris's video down below. Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand was also tagged in Chris's video and she did it as well. So I will link both their videos down below. And this is one of those, it's not all, hardly any bookish questions I feel like. So I did obviously watch Sarah and Krista's videos. I know some of the questions, but I don't know all of them. It's been a little bit since I watched it. So we're just gonna go through them and answer them. And then by the end of this, in theory, you will know something new about me. So question number one is what's your channel about? It's about all things books. So reading them, writing them, all the things, not about sneakers. When I came up with my channel name, I thought chapter and converse was like so clever, like chapter and verse. It took me a long time to get there, mind you. The number of people who think it's chapter and converse, which I understand because looking at it, but I've had many people be like, oh, I kind of thought it was like about sneakers, or I didn't understand why you were talking about sneakers or anything. So hindsight being what it is, this is not a sneaker channel, but yes, books, reading them, writing them, movies, podcasts, everything in that realm. Question number two is how old are you? <laughs> Let's get personal here. I am in my fourth decade around the sun. There you go, I'll give you that. What is your relationship status? I am single. I feel like I am also like doing my taxes. Question number four, did you go to college? What's your occupation? So I went to Boston University. I was a magazine journalism major and I minored in American history. I originally was gonna do photojournalism. It's a whole thing. I took some photography class a photography class, some photography class. I took a photography class in high school, which I loved, but I wound up doing magazine journalism. I sadly do not work in magazine journalism. It was the goal. I definitely had all the plans in the world, but when I graduated, I loved Boston. I was having such a great time there. I absolutely fell in love with the city. Even though my initial plan was to come back to New York after those four years, I wound up staying. I got an apartment there. I got a job eventually after a lot of um, bad temp jobs and a bounced rent check and trying to scrounge it all together that summer. So my career path has been a little bit of a journey. Right now I work for a financial services company and I actually work in contracts, procurement, a lot of vendor management, but I started my career in commercial real estate and eventually our company got sold and not to a great company. So I wound up making a bit of a career change and I kind of took my operational knowledge and went in-house with the company and ran the operations for different firms. So I worked for an architecture firm for a few years. I did a very short stint at a PR firm. And then I worked in consulting for a while. And now I'm at my current company, which is a financial services company, but I have done construction, event planning. I mean like everything and anything to run an office or a building. I've done human resources. I've done recruiting. Like I've definitely been in those jobs where you wear tons of hats and you kind of do all of the things. And I have learned an incredible amount through it all. So that was a long story. You know, it's going to take me forever to do this, you guys. Okay. Question number five, where are you from and where do you live? So I grew up north of New York city. We were a train right away on the commuter rail and I don't live in the same town now, but I live north of New York city. <laughs> on a commuter line um, to get into the city. So in between, I went to school in Boston. I wound up staying there for a while. And then when I moved back to New York, I ultimately moved into Midtown Manhattan and I lived there for a while. And then I came back out to the suburbs because I was really missing peace and quiet. And in a million years, I never would have thought that I would wind up back here necessarily, but I also couldn't be happier about it. So yeah, full circle. Number six, looking back, what would you have told your 10 year old self? <sighs> 10 year old self who wants to help with math. I feel like 10 was probably like fifth grade. I feel like that feels right. 
I was 13 when I was a freshman, so it's probably like fifth or sixth grade. You know, I feel like a couple months ago it was, I was at my parents' house and my dad has been like progressively putting old photos onto the computer and scanning things and like all the pictures are all out of order and everything. But this picture of me came up and I'll find it and show it to you guys. I'm definitely younger than 10 in this picture. I'm probably, I don't know, maybe I'm like seven or something, but I saw this picture. I have no memory of this picture at all, like being taken or even having seen it before. And I just, I know I look cheesy, but was so just uninhibited when I was a kid. I was, I was confident. I wasn't shy. Like I was always, like if I was comfortable, I wasn't shy. I was always definitely like a little bit hiding behind my mom, but like I didn't think twice about things. I didn't care what other people thought of me. Like I definitely had just sort of like this total like chutzpah confidence about me that somewhere along the way I lost. So I feel like I would tell my 10 year old self to look at this picture and stay her. And also just like, like don't get cut off in the nonsense. Like don't get cut off in people's reindeer games. Like don't let other people's opinions influence you or or kind of crush your confidence or make you not trust your gut. Like trust your gut more, go after what you want, follow your dreams, like have faith in yourself. Like I definitely, especially as you get like a little older and I feel like those awful middle school teen years, you know, where people just kind of like can chip away at you a bit. I definitely became much more self-conscious. I was not like the dancing girl in the picture. Um, so I would tell myself to like, stick with her because she knows she knows what's going on but like yeah don't get caught in the reindeer games don't let other people make you second guess yourself don't let other people take you down or make you feel bad or make you feel less than just stay with the confidence just know like you've got this you're good trust your gut trust your dreams trust your heart um and you'll be good number seven tell us about your family so I come from a small family, so I have an older sister and my parents, and it's just the four of us. And yeah, um, <laughs> like there's not that much to tell. Um, everything's good. We, you know, I grew up in the same house. We moved there when I was like almost three. I lived there my whole younger life. My parents sold that house, I think when I was like 23, maybe 23 or 24, they live, a little bit less than an hour away from me, so I get to see my parents quite a bit. My sister lives out in California. She's been out there for quite a while. Um, I went there a few summers ago, 2019, I wanna say it is. Yeah, it was 2019, so I stayed out there. I was there for a couple weeks, came home, and then went back out for a few weeks, and it was just great. I'd never been out there for a long time before. I'd been to Pasadena once before for like a work conference, and that was it. But yeah, we grew up together, um, grew up in a great small town, but yeah, it was always the four of us. Uh, I would like to say, and I would like to think that I have a great relationship with my parents, which I'm super grateful for. And I'm grateful that they're as close as they are. And I, I could just pop in the car and go see them and vice versa. So yeah. Number eight, what's your favorite holiday? Uh, holidays are so stressful. I would say Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving was our holiday. That's the one we always hosted at our house. And my mom comes from a smaller family as well as does my dad. So it was always just sort of like this core group of people that were always there. And we went to my grandparents, my mom's parents quite a bit because they lived nearby. And then one of my mom's brothers, his family usually hosted Christmas as well, but Thanksgiving was ours. So my mom was always making pies and like we had people over and I always loved to help like set the table and have the napkins out and like do all the silverware. And I loved doing all of that kind of stuff. So I think because we hosted it at our house and my dad's birthday is in November, sometimes it falls on Thanksgiving. So to me, it's always, it's the least stressful. I find as much as I love Christmas and the tree and all of that stuff, I find it all to be an extremely stressful time of year. So Thanksgiving to me is like a no pressure kind of a situation because you just like go and have some good food and hang out. And I also just love to sit around and talk and eat really good food. Number nine, you have no budget. What is your dream vacation? So I would love to go back to Europe and do like a mega long multi-country extravaganza. And I love, one of my most favorite things about Europe is 
how easy it is once you're there to get from place to place, to get from country to country. You can take trains, you know, like it's so cheap to fly from one country to the next. I love that you can be in a city like Paris or London and then you can also be somewhere in the country or you can be in the mountains or you can be at the beach. So I would definitely need to map out like where I would wanna go. Like I've never been to Italy, I would still love to go to Italy. I've never been to Ireland, I would still like to be able to do that. And I would just hit as many countries as possible and like see as much as possible and do a mix of like mountains and beach and country and city. And I'm assuming this no budget will extend to shopping and eating and great hotels and like all those things, all those things. Number 10, name your biggest pet peeves. <laughs> so I will say one of the many things I am grateful to be able to work from home now so many of my pet peeves revolve around people on the train, like people in the office, just like basic human consideration. So people who talk on their cell phones on the train, cell phones are like, like the death of, <laughs> I feel like, good behavior. I'm grateful to have a cell phone, but the number of people who talk on their cell phones on the train, like they are the only people there, don't even get me started on the ones who FaceTime without headphones in or anything. I feel like if you commute anywhere, you have seen it all. So people who will watch movies on their iPads or their laptops without headphones in, like anything on the train without your headphones in, rude. Uh, people who put their bags on the seat next to them and pretend not to see you when you're looking for a seat on a super crowded train, drives me bananas. People who eat really not nice smelling food that they picked up at Grand Central on the train. Makes me want to gag, especially if it's that popcorn that sometimes smells like feet. I love popcorn, but there is some popcorn that you used to be able to get at Grand Central and I swear it smells like feet. So people who eat that can't stand it. Uh, people who put their feet up on the seat and then you need a place to sit and their dirty feet have been there. Drives me bananas. Let me think, what else, what else, what else? <laughs> so many pet peeves. <laughs> People at work who just are like slobs in the kitchen, you know, like they'll leave the milk out or they'll pour sugar in something and the sugar will spill and they'll leave the wrapper there or things just spill and they just walk right by it. Like the number of people, especially when you've been in an operations role where you are the person where they just expect someone's gonna come clean it up and you're the person who gets to like clean it up or facilitate cleaning it up, who basically would like step over a dead body if they were there and like they just avert an eye. They don't report things. They don't clean up after themselves. Just basic human, just courtesy, just courtesy. So, but yeah, the stuff on the train drives me nuts. Just absolutely nuts. Anything that other people do on the train, put me in the quiet car. Quiet car is super competitive. It's hard to get into, but put me on the quiet car. Number 11, what book changed your life? Ugh, where do we start? I remember in high school when I read Catcher in the Rye, I totally loved the book, but I feel like part of what, I don't know if it was as much about the book. We had to write, one of our writing assignments was to write a final chapter, like in Holden's voice. And I remember doing that and loving it. And I feel like this is probably more about writing. I feel like that was one of the first times as like, an, not an adult, but like, I think I was in 10th grade when I did that versus like a kid where you get a compliment on a story you wrote where the teacher complimented my writing and my ability and it made me want to write more. But as far as like, I'm trying to think book book, I feel like I always go back to the secret history because I remember going to the BU bookstore mall and buying that book and like finding it, reading the back of it, thinking how amazing it sounded and reading it and just being like, and I don't know if it was, even though I had no murder in college, <laughs> did not murder anybody, but feeling like some kind of a connection to being the outsider or to being at this school or like the New England feel of it. Like, I don't know why I connected with it as much as I did, but I loved it. And I have my original copy. I know I've shown it to you guys before, hold on. Okay, so this is my original copy of The Secret History from back in the day. And it's 
I know it's like why why do I still have it I mean it's it's in pieces I have refused to get rid of it I have bought two new copies of it so I wound up getting like a new paperback proper one of it and then I wound up finding through my obsessive thrifting online a hardcover I mean it's like honestly you guys like the pages are ripped in the back but I refuse to get rid of it I just loved this book so much and I just felt I don't know what it was about it that I just devoured it and loved it and I think I just felt like I discovered something new like I'd never read before and kind of like what is this world of books that she was writing that I just absolutely fell in love with but I've read this book a few times and I love it and I think it's great and I just think it was so smart the way it was done I definitely think like the New England vibe of it was something I connected to being in Boston but I just absolutely loved it so much and I just think it's so great. I just absolutely love it and I will not get rid of this version of it. So yes, I now own three copies of The Secret History, but this is my original one. Number 12, what simple invention improved the world? I feel like Krista said toothbrush. I feel like that was one of the things she talked about. Like what, what, what is simple? What is simple? simple invention that changed the world. I mean, I feel like cars aren't simple, but it certainly changed the world. Um, computers aren't simple, but they change the world. What's a simple invention? Now I know why Krista was like, ah, I can't think. I feel like she said lights too, which like probably also not simple, but yeah, lights change the world. What about remote controls? I don't know how hard that was to make. Does anybody remember having to stand up and like turn the dial on the TV? Definitely changed the world. I'm going with remote controls. Remote controls for like all the things, all the remote controls for your garage door, all the things you did, like, yes, yes, remote controls. That's my answer, that's my answer. Question number 13 is your favorite movies and TV shows. So another one I feel like this would be a video in and of itself so I have just started re-watching Remington Steel from the beginning I love this show I'm totally obsessed with this show I remember watching this with my parents when I was younger and I absolutely loved it I obviously did not understand all of it at the time but I was like obsessed with that show and it's so smart I mean I've watched these episodes more times than I can tell you guys but like it's so smart so witty and I love that each episode is related to a classic movie. So I always love that. I'm a huge rewatcher. I have talked about my complete obsession with Murder, She Wrote. I own the 12 disc DVD set. I've watched those countless times. I love Buffy, which I haven't watched in a while, but I love Buffy. I love, I'm trying to think of like something more recent, which is hard. I love Castle. I did not love the later seasons, but I loved Castle early seasons, probably like the first five or six, I would say. I loved Gilmore. What else was I obsessed with? Veronica Mars, I'm totally obsessed with Veronica Mars. I'm loving Nancy Drew. I can't wait for season four to start. I watched Mayor of Easttown. I don't know if that's really like a TV show. It was just like a, you know, small mini series. Movies, Dead Poet Society is probably my favorite movie. Good Will Hunting, I absolutely love. I recently was talking about Empire Records, which is why I got that whole like, it's Rex Manning Day thing back in my head again. I love Empire Records so much. I love Before Sunrise with Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. Um, what else, what else, what else? I feel like I could just go like look at my whole collection, but I'm trying to like resist temptation. I loved Younger with Sutton Foster, such a good show. I feel like I could go on and on. I love Scream, I love Gone Girl. I feel like these are things that are like in my head just because I've like watched them recently. I loved How to Get Away with Murder. I loved, I just love so many classic shows, dare I say, like I loved original 90210, I mean, I can go on and on so that should be <laughs> that should hold you guys describe yourself using three fictional characters so I uh, when Sarah was doing this she had done a quiz and I was like hmm I wonder what I would be because I feel like I don't know what fictional characters like I feel like there's definitely different fictional characters that I've related to at different times in my life so I a thousand percent related to 
Lucy Sullivan from Lucy Sullivan's Getting Married by Marion Keys and kind of at that time like Bridget Jones by Helen Fielding. Like I definitely was like that 20 something girl who was working, who was kind of messy, <laughs> like had some great friends and had a great time. So I definitely like at different points in my life have related to different characters. I also definitely relate to a lot of, though not in actions necessarily, but some of the messy characters in a Jennifer Hillier book, I definitely like have some very strong feelings about them. And I feel like that's why I love those characters so much. I feel like I should have done better research for this, but I did take a random quiz after Sarah did out of curiosity and I saved it. And surprisingly, I think it's surprising. It said that I'm Sherlock Holmes, which I'm not mad about, but it says you are observant, logical, and downright brilliant. I'm like, stop. But sometimes you get overly invested in what you are working on and have a hard time asking for help. Absolutely true. If you remember you are just human like everything else, things will go easier for you. So I definitely agree with observant and logical. I'm not that much of a narcissist. I'm like, I'm downright brilliant. But I do have a hard time asking for help. I will get overly invested and sort of tunnel vision and lose myself in things. So I would like to fancy myself quite the crime solver although I don't know that I necessarily am, but I'll take Sherlock Holmes. And then you're supposed to have three. Can I use Lucy and Bridget and Sherlock Holmes as my three people? Again, I feel like I should have done my research. I did not, did not plan this well, my friends, did not plan this well. Number 15, what was your dream job? I was going to be Jane Pratt, editor in chief of Sassy, ultimately went on and created Jane Magazine. Like I wanted to be Jane. I wanted to work at Sassy. And Sassy went away. <laughs> I wanted to work at Jane, but my my mission was to be a magazine journalist, to work at like a Mademoiselle or a Glamour, one of those magazines in New York, and be be a magazine girl. And I wound up not coming back to New York after I graduated college. And finding a magazine job in Boston was hard. So I did work at one magazine for a few months. It did not pay anything. It was an unpaid internship. Um, so I worked there, interned there. I ultimately hoped it was going to lead to something, but like it was part of a nonprofit. Money was not there to be made. So I wound up temping and eventually getting that real estate job. But yeah, I wanted to be a magazine person. I don't know how I would have done ultimately in it. I was not ready to live in Manhattan when I was 21 and to have that job. So. I guess life takes you where it's supposed to take you and you know, you make choices, but that was gonna be my dream job. 16, if magic was real, what spell would you learn first? <sighs> I know revenge is a dish best served cold, but I feel like I might wanna zap a few people. I would like to, I joke about this, but like I would like to stop time, whether it's so I could sit and read all day, so I could be in a moment and just like, stop time in the world around me, but wherever I am and whoever I am with would keep going. And I feel like that was a thing on Charmed where like they could freeze other people, but like they could keep doing their thing. I would want to do that because a lot of times I like don't want a moment to end You can freeze time, you know, or you just want more time in the day to do the things you want to do. I would also like to be able to like jump time. So if I wanted to get from here to my fabulous trip in Europe, I could just sort of snap my fingers or like click my heels and just be where I needed to be and would not have to deal with travel. I'm not a good traveler. Number 17, share a favorite childhood memory. <sighs> I'm so ill prepared for this video. I remember taking a summer vacation to the Catskills with my parents and my sister had done exchange programs. So she's three years older than me. So she was gone. So it was just me and my parents. And I loved just such like a parent's girl. Like I just really enjoyed hanging out with my parents and like had a good time. But I remember like playing mini golf and being at the pool, but just going somewhere. Like we, I almost feel like it was the first, like, re like we had taken trips when I was younger, but I feel like it was like one of the first ones I have like a real memory of like, staying for a while and like having the hotel room and just like how cool it felt to be there. And we started going to Cape Cod then afterwards, which I also had such a great time with. I was like a little bit older when we did that, but I loved going to the Catskills. I don't know, I just, I don't, like I felt fancy doing it. 
I don't know, it felt like a big deal. So I felt fancy doing that. And I'm trying to think like other childhood memories. I feel like there's probably just like a kajillion of them, but that like definitely stands out for me. I'm thinking like childhood. I also feel like now that I'm like back on my Mets kick, uh, my mom and I were talking a lot about this, like going to our first Mets games and like what fun that was and like just being like into something and going to a stadium, like it all just felt like such a big deal. And I remember getting like the foam finger and getting the baseball and then going to baseball shows and getting things autographed and like meeting the players and all of that kind of stuff. Like I was just like such a baseball nerd. I just loved it so much. Number 18, what's your favorite social media platform and why? So I love Instagram so much. And I, I definitely subscribe to the, a picture is worth a thousand words. I love the photography part of it, even though I did not kind of dropped the photo from the photojournalism. <laughs> I've always loved photography. I've had a camera for as long as I can remember. And I just love taking pictures of things and sharing those pictures. And I love conveying a mood or a feeling or an experience through a photo. I just, I love that about Instagram. And I love how instantly you can see something what somebody else is up to or get a mood or a feeling from them. But just that quick accessibility, I love how creative people get with Instagram. And I just think it's great. And from a time standpoint, I love me some YouTube, but this stuff takes a lot of time, you guys, as you know. So to me, Instagram is something that's like very easily accessible and you can do the video part if you want, but like just being able to do the pictures, I love it. What's your spirit animal? So I, I think of the spirit animal. So for one, here's another TV show I love, Girls which I wish that was around when I was in my Lucy Sullivan, Bridget Jones phase. But I don't know if anybody remembers that, I don't know if it's like Trouble in Bushwick, like the Craxident, the episode from season one, where Jessa tells, shows, she's like, like, I will be your spirit crack guide. I always think of that. <laughs> and of course my battery dies when I'm talking about the spirit crack guide from girls. So anyway, I think about like the spirit guide and who would be my spirit guide. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to be bold here, and I'm going to call Jennifer Hillier my spirit guide because her career trajectory, her process of writing, I've listened to so many interviews with her, I've gobbled up so much information about her. I feel such a connection to her as a writer in terms of her process, in terms of how she comes to her books, how she comes to her stories, and I am still struck by jar of hearts how amazing that book was and that very brief moment where i got to talk to her at thriller fest when she was signing my book and i just told her how much i loved it and how i felt like she went all in and held nothing back and i was blown away by the fearlessness of what i read as fearlessness in that book and she said that was her book where like this was it like it was sort of she was giving herself a last shot she put everything she had into it she wasn't even telling her editor what she was writing at the time. She just did it. And she talks about this in so many different interviews and just that complete willingness to hold nothing back and just to go for it, like full on, I just absolutely love. But I just think she's absolutely amazing. I just connect with her in her writing process and how she talks about her writing and how she talks about her books and how she talks about just even the struggles with writing and trying to figure certain things out and trying, you know, to fit into certain boxes, but not fit into certain boxes and her just viewpoint on the entire writing world. I just connect with so many things that she talks about. And I mean, she's absolutely one of my heroes. So I'm picking Jennifer Hillier. Number 21, what old person thing do you do? Old person thing do you do? Um, I obsessively watch my Murder, She Wrote DVDs. <laughs> like, what's an old person thing? I'm such a Nana. I have so many Nana habits, I feel like. I'm very particular. I have a bathrobe that I love. Is bathrobes an old person thing? I feel like that's like of a, of a previous time. Like, do people still buy bathrobes the same way anymore? They probably do. Um, I... It's like an old person. I mean, like what makes it an old person thing? I think about like grandma's having like butterscotch candy wrappers or something, or like whiskey in a teacup. 
Um, what's an old person thing? I don't know. I feel like that's insulting. Like, what makes something an old person thing? I get annoyed when there's a park at the end of my street that's like a little league field and a playground and a basketball court and like a park and everything, which like more power to them. It's great. It's a great place to go. But when kids are walking up and down the sidewalk to get there, the basketball kids, they will bounce their basketball the entire time. And it's like, thudunk, 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 and it drives me crazy. So I definitely feel like an old person when I'm like, you kids are driving me crazy. Keep it down. Like I want the quiet. I don't know if that's an old person thing necessarily, but like I want the quiet. Nana likes her quiet. I also like to go to bed early and I get annoyed when there's noise around me that's preventing me from going to bed early. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if this is an old person thing either. I feel like this is like a self-care thing. I will slather my hands and my feet in lotion and sleep in socks and gloves, like cotton gloves. I remember like my grandmother would wear cotton gloves, but I know it was because like, as you get older and your skin gets thinner and it just becomes like a whole different thing. But like, I will sleep in cotton gloves sometimes with lotion underneath. I don't know, is that old lady-ish? I don't know. Number 22, do you have a hidden talent? No. <laughs> I don't have a hidden talent or an upfront talent. No. Number 23, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know if I necessarily see myself here, but I would love to see myself published at Thriller Fest, like on a panel, not just in the audience, living Probably still in New York, but not here. And I would love, again, these are dreams, which I realize like dreams into plans, like make it happen. I would love to be a full-time writer, which I realize like aspiration, like times a thousand, but where I would dream be in five years. That's where I would dream be. Number 19, if you could pick any book character if you could pick any book character, who would you spend the day with? Oh, I feel like I need major inspiration. Could I spend a day with authors, not characters? Like Jennifer Hillier and Riley Sager and Marion Keys and Gillian Flynn. I would love to spend the day with like my favorite writers. I don't know that I could pick one character. Although I would not say no to Ben Lederman from Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. I would spend the day with Ben. I would also like, like to hang out with Ashley Winstead and talk writing with her. I would spend the day with Ben. I would also spend the day with the guys from Shiver, who I talked about in a different video. Brent and, I always wanna call him Cooper, but it's not Cooper, those dudes, the dudes from Shiver. I would definitely be down with hanging out with one of them. And then, like looking around. Oh, I also wouldn't mind hanging out with HUD from Malibu Rising or the entire Riva family, the four Riva kids at the party in Malibu. I would do that for the day. I would totally do that for the day. Number 24, share an item and tell us its significance. I moved all the stuff, hold on. I gotta get up for this one too. I have all these little like things all over the place that are filled with different memories from different things. And this is, it's a little, it's a bunny rabbit. This girl that I used to work with gave us these Easter gifts a very long time ago. So when I worked at this architecture firm, but I always loved it and kept it. But this is filled with all sorts of little like seashells and there's tops from champagne bottles and there's I don't even remember what birthday this was, but there's like birthday candles in here. And I have a couple keychains, which is what I was gonna pull out of here. Because whenever I went somewhere on a trip, I would always get a keychain or a magnet, something small that was always like a memory of it. So I have this Eiffel Tower keychain from one of my first trips to Paris. So I wound up buying two of them because I actually have one that's on my keychain. Uh, which is kind of dented. It's not really like the best metal. This is like, you know, like $2 from like a street vendor. So this is like my pristine one. And then my other one, this is a keychain. So this is, it says strand. It's all coming off. Let's see if you can. 
Ugh, you wanna see, what's old lady? Look at my hands, that's old lady. Okay, there we go. So I got this at my first Thriller Fest. So every year at Thriller Fest, there's a local bookstore, which is the bookstore sponsor. And I, I don't know if it always changed every year, but it's changed every year since. But the Strand was there the first year, so I bought this keychain. And I had this on my keychain for a really long time. And as you can see, it got super dirty and started to fall apart. So I took it off. So I now have it just in my little memory collection kit. Sorry, got distracted by noise as I'm apt to do, but I love it so much. But I love having just little mementos of different trips. And then this just has like little seashells in it. Like there's just a whole mess of things in here. There's like euros from different trips and little um, baby pine cones and just all sorts of little things. I love any, like I'm the person who will steal the matchbook when they used to give out matchbooks or the napkin or like the swizzle stick. Like I have an entire box full of stuff of this nature where they're just mementos, just little things that you could kind of like slip in your pocket as a memory from a trip I took or something that I did. And I just love that kind of stuff. I love having those kinds of memories. And then the last question is tag some other people. So I'm always terrible about picking people to tag. A, cause I'm always the last person to do these videos. And B, I'm always like, I don't want to put pressure on anybody else. So if anybody wants to do this video, totally do it. Because obviously it's a great way to just force you to think about some stuff you never thought about before. Um, you can prepare a little bit better than I did. I was not so great off the cuff, but here we are. But yes, if anybody wants to do it, let me know. And if you do wind up doing this video, definitely be sure to like tag me or post it in a comment or something like that. Like, let me know if you're going to do it so I can check it out. But on that note, thank you, Krista, for tagging me in this video. I'm sorry it took me a dog's age to actually do it. But thank you guys for also sitting through it, all the crazy and all the chaos. And I will see you guys in another video when I do that. And until then, take care, have fun. It's super hot here today. So stay cool, everybody. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye, everybody.